I am multifaceted, eccentric, and uh, to some a little bit crazy. <laughs> but I love what I do. I'm Ricky Carroll, I live in Asheville, Mass, and I'm affectionately known as the cheese queen these days in my business, which is New England Cheese Making Supply Company or cheesemaking.com. This business has evolved into a monster. <laughs> Today, we probably are sending out orders to 20 countries. In March, it was in the Oprah magazine, and um, it's been, you know, full page New York Times and probably every magazine and newspaper in the country at one point or another over the 31 years that I've been doing it. And, you know, I'm still wearing dungarees. Definitely hundreds of thousands of people um, have been affected by what I do. The book has sold hundreds of thousands of copies, and it's amazing. We were on the Today Show when it came out in 1980. It's hard to realize that, you know, one little pebble thrown in the water can make such a big ripple. The day after we got married, we bought this big house, and 11 people moved into it. At the time, we're running an alternative detention center where we kept boys from the time they got arrested until the time they went to court and we had them build a barn with us and take care of animals. A neighbor came over who had goats living in her basement and she said, I think you should get a goat and you should get two goats. So we got two goats. Well, neither one of us knew how to milk goats at the time and this was back in about 1976. We started getting a lot of milk and we didn't know what to do with it. And so we started making cheese we were experimenting and things were turning out a little funky. They were yellowish and brownish and fuzzy and gray and mushy and there was nobody in the country who could help us. We started writing letters to embassies around the world and asking people if they knew of anybody in their country who made cheese at home. So we went for two weeks to England. We stayed with this family who was making cheese on their farm, just for themselves, from their couple of cows. And we learned a lot. We decided to have workshops to teach people how to do this. There was no way for people to become, or it was very difficult to become an artisanal cheesemaker early on because there was no way to buy supplies in small enough quantities to start up. What we started doing was importing things from all over the world and bringing them in in large quantities and splitting them up and selling them in smaller quantities. And many people who came to the first workshops did become artisanal cheesemakers. What would we be doing if we didn't have home and artisanal cheesemakers in the United States? We'd be eating Velveeta. We'd be eating Kraft cheese. Some of the benefits of working with cheese and making your own cheese, some of the health benefits are, A, you know what goes into your milk. I think that today we've gotten so far away on a lot of levels from our food source that making it ourselves brings us back into line with, it closes a circle. And the more that we can make ourselves or the more that we can um, buy locally, so buy from the person who makes it and so that we know where the um, food comes from, the better that it is for us. Cheese. It's like, it's made with love. It's taken care of on a daily basis by the cheesemaker. And that's on the artisanal side or somebody who wants to really get into it, um, home, even home cheesemakers can make that kind of cheese. And so I think that what the um, artisanal cheesemakers of this country and the American Cheese Society has kind of helped foster the fact that Americans now are making really good cheeses, a lot of them. Um, that's very exciting. On the other side, you have the fun part, <laughs> the family part, the part that I teach beginners now. And you can make um, cheeses really, really simply, um, very straightforward cheeses that you can eat right away or the next day, and that's really fun. I get letters from people all over the world, and I love getting letters. It keeps me connected with the people that are on the, other, the receiving side of what I do. We sent some ingredients and equipment to 
um, countries in Africa where people have said that they've increased their income 10 times just for making sour cream, for instance, or yogurt with the milk from the animals that they raise. Cheese making isn't all I do in my life. Um, selling cheese making supplies is not all I do in my life. All of my life, probably, I have liked to get groups together. And nowadays, I guess that would be what's known as community building. I have created situations um, in my home, usually, where many people can get together for a multitude of things, including singing workshops. We've had Appalachian workshops and gospel workshops, and we had a 10-day singing camp here with 45 people. Drumming circles here like every week for a year and a half, and we just like play outside on the front porch and play in the yard. I believe that what I've done in this business is create a community through cheese making. And it in itself becomes an art. It's not the um, craft or fine art that I learned in school, but it's been the art of cheese making and the art of making it fun and the art of making it family and the, there's a lot of art involved. My house is put together in a fashion that makes me smile. There was one point where I looked at it, oh well, if I wasn't in my art studio in my attic, I wasn't really making art. And then I thought, well, wait a minute, I've just expanded and gotten older, and now my whole house has become my palette. The world we choose hasn't been opposed upon us from without, but comes into being through us. In every moment, we collaborate in the ongoing work of creation, including the creation of ourselves, because that's really epitomizes my life that and everybody's life that we're all creations and nobody um, really can be like anybody else and you're like your own self and it's very similar to the recipes that she's making how do you you know make this exact recipe well you can't you go home and make it into your own you use that for a starting place how do you make this painting I want to paint you know like this how do you make this book you can't everything becomes your own and that to me is like keeps me alive.